Laser sights can deter threats and aid in quick target identification, enhancing your ability to protect your family, home, and country. Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. National voice in defense of your Second Amendment rights. Gun Talk, available on iTunes and on the free Gun Dealio smartphone app for Android and iPhone. To be on the air with Tom, call us now, 866-825-5486 or 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom. All right, back with you, Tom Gresham, Gun Talk, 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. By the way, be sure to get your copy of the Gun Dealio app. I've had people say, well, you know, I, I got it, but I didn't want to enter my email address. I don't care. I don't need your email address. That's one of those, yeah, if you want to, that's fine, but it works without that. Besides, come on, it's us. We're not going to track you. We don't, we're not giving your information away or anything. But if you don't want to put your email address in, I don't care. It's fine. Just use it. Save money. Get deals. It's called Gun Dealio. G-U-N-D-E-A-L-I-O. Available for the Android phone and the iPhone. Oh, yeah. It's free. It'll save you money. You'll get good deals. Just get it. Install it. Allow the notifications. That's that's the big payoff. No- notifications because we alert you when there are cool deals. Yeah, gun dealio. Just, as I say, just get it and start saving money on guns and ammo and everything else today, okay? In the world of gun politics, of gun research, of gun information, there's so much misinformation out there. Sometimes it can be hard to track down what's real. For more than, I don't know, going on two decades, one voice we have come to rely upon, and actually... It's kind of a phrase that we use now, more guns, less crime. Do you even know where that came from? More guns, less crime? Well, that was the name of John Lott's book that documented this and studied it across the country. John Lott, of course, a a professor, an economist, and a, a gun researcher extraordinaire joins us right now to talk about his latest book, The War on Guns, Arming Yourself Against Gun Control Lies. Hey, John, welcome. Well, thanks very much for having me on again. I greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, now, we announced the book last week, and we told people we were trying to load it up because it actually makes a difference how many copies you can sell on Amazon in the first week to try to drive it up in the listings. Because what we wanted was for people, for the public, maybe <laughs> the publishing world, to sit up and go, hey, wait a minute, there really are a lot of people who are interested in this book. So, how do we do in the first week sales? Well, I don't know the total week sales yet. I probably don't know in a couple of days. But um, uh, we got as high as sixty-five on Amazon, which is good. I'd like That's... would like to have gotten a little bit higher, but that I greatly appreciate your efforts and the efforts of others. I mean, the point of doing that is to help generate more conversation about the points in the book. I I wrote this. Um, in order to try to educate people for this election that's coming up. There's a lot at stake here, and there's so much misinformation that's been put out. You know, in the past, the gun control debate was largely a legislative debate. But in the last Mm -hmm. six years or so, with Michael Bloomberg's and George Soros's strong entries into this debate, it's really changed. We've had hundreds of millions of dollars being spent on producing research to support their viewpoints. I mean, it's mind-boggling how much money gets spent on this. Bloomberg has worked out something with Columbia University where they brought in reporters from around the country uh, to try to train them and how, in Bloomberg's view, to c- properly cover the gun issue. I mean, could you imagine Columbia University working out something with the NRA so that reporters could be brought in from around the country to teach them the way the NRA thinks that the gun issue ought to be covered. I mean, it wouldn't even be something that would anybody would take seriously for even a nanosecond. But somehow, Bloomberg's work is viewed as objective by places like Columbia University. And, you know, uh, when he 
produces these reports that he pays for, um, they can get thousands of news stories within a week or two after the report's issued, and they virtually never have any critical voices in this news coverage. What Bloomberg, I think, has learned is that Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a reason for the change in views on guns over the last 20 years. You look at the polls, and support for gun control basically peaked around 1998, and it's been falling since then. But I think the main reason why it's been falling is that people perceive that guns make them safer now than they used to, whether it be in the home or whether it be concealed carry outside the home. And as people have learned that guns make them safer, I mean, for example, in in 2000, only 35% of Americans felt that owning a gun in the home made them safer. By uh, the end of 2014, that had gone up to 63%. That's a huge change. And, and right, well, let, let, me, let me jump in here, John, because, John, here, here's the thing I want people to understand. Here's, here's the important part of this, and that is if you have Bloomberg with his billions of dollars comes in and works with Columbia University, for those who don't know, this is the premier journalism program in the country. It's the largest graduate school for journalism in the country. And it, basically, you've got University of Missouri, Northwestern, and Columbia. Those, those are your big J schools there. And then he comes in and says, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to teach people how to cover guns, the gun issue, the way that I, the gun banner, wants it to be covered. And then he turns around through his groups and sends out these press releases and these phony baloney research papers. And then the journalists, with air quotes around journalists, who they have paid their way to come to this indoctrination program, then they go back to their um, right. TV stations, their newspapers, etc., and they treat Bloomberg's propaganda as fact. The net result of that is the public now doesn't hear the truth. They only hear what Bloomberg has paid for and what his sycophants in the media are willing to tell them, and that makes a difference in public opinion, doesn't it? Uh, I couldn't have said it better. No, that's exactly the concern that's there, that if people hear, I mean, the media is already biased enough, and I go through examples about how mass public shootings that have been stopped around the country by concealed carry permit holders, example after example that don't get national news coverage, but if the permit holders Mm -hmm. weren't there uh, and the bad thing had happened, you know it would have gotten national news coverage how hearing constantly about bad things that happen and not about the benefits, how that by itself biases people's perceptions about the costs and benefits. But now you also have this massive influx of, of poorly done research, but the problems with it are never discussed. But people constantly hear, you know, some study has gone and shown that gun-free zones don't matter in terms of mass public shootings or uh, that the United States is somehow unique in terms of the level of mass public shootings. Or what, one thing uh, that people probably don't even realize originally started with Bloomberg was the claim that restrictions on federal funding for the CDC have somehow been responsible for ending uh, research on firearms uh, and, the, and public health type issues. I mean, it's simply a false claim. But Bloomberg put out a report a few years ago uh, claiming that uh, that there had been this huge drop in research on uh, public health issues dealing with firearms. But what he had mm-hmm. done was um, he had looked at firearms research as a percentage of all medical journal research. Firearms research never fell. But what happened was is that medical journal research on tons of other areas exploded. You had whole new areas of medicine open up with gene therapy, new journals mm. getting started, all sorts of other areas. And it only fell as a percentage. But the reporters didn't understand the differences that were there. Right. And, and, and so you had all these academics calling for more money and that the NRA is somehow frozen and stopped research. It's simply based on original study. Most reporters don't even know where the original claim came from in terms of it. Well, and, and, and that's what you're doing in your book, is you're giving people the information, the background, how to find it, where it is, and giving them the 
the facts of this and how the the information that they're being handed is is so tailored and purchased and it's orchestrated. The, the name of the book, and I'm going to have to run here, John, the name of the book is The War on Guns, Arming Yourself Against Gun Control Laws by John Lott. Lies. It's available on, and, and it's, uh, lies, I'm sorry, gun control lies. The, the um, Arming Yourself Against Gun Control Lies is the title uh, by John Lott. It's available on Amazon, right? That's Is that the best way to get it? Right. Yeah, no, that's okay. It's probably the cheapest way to go and get it. <laughs> there you go. John, I appreciate all your hard work and always have. Uh, and I thank you for spending a little time with us here. Recommend the book. Get smart. Get the book. John Lott. It's called The War on Guns, Arming Yourself Against Gun Control Lies. And it enumerates the lies. It tells you what they are, where they came from. So when people say, well, that's not true, you say, well, actually, yes, it is. And this is where it came from. And this is who repeated it. And this is what the study behind it is. And you'll have all that information. You really can, in this case, be the smartest person in the room. Get it? It's called The War on Guns, Arming Yourself Against Gun Control Lies. All right. Open lines now. 866-TALK-GUN. 866-TALK-GUN. The Black Hills. There's nothing like it on Earth. The kind of place where characters become legends. Wild Bill Hickok. Crazy Oars. Calamity Jane. Pick any part of the world and you'll find people go there to make it their own. But this is where people come to get made. This is the place that made the people who make the best ammo on earth. Black Hills Ammunition. You're at a gun store, and your phone tells you about hot deals. Want to know about special offers? No problem when you have Gun Dealio, the free app for your smartphone. Gun Dealio delivers the latest deals on guns, ammo, and extras. Direct to your phone. Don't overpay for your shooting gear. Get Gun Dealio. It's free at the App Store and Google Play. Trigger the deals with Gun Dealio. Gundealio.com. the field or on the range you need a trigger you can trust for over 60 years timney triggers have been trusted by hunters and shooters everywhere a timney trigger could mean the difference between a great shot and a miss timney triggers are proudly made in the usa and come with a lifetime warranty to order go to timneytriggers.com that's t-i-m-n-e-y triggers.com as kids, we learned growing up, if you were going to hunt Wabbit, you had to be very, very quiet. Oh. At SilencerShop.com, that's what we do. We make guns very quiet with state-of-the-art suppressor technology for every caliber you've got in your safe, from 22s up to the big boys. Minimal noise, less recoil, higher velocity, better accuracy. Do you honestly need another reason to get a silencer? Oh, ask we Wabbit. Get the facts and get suppressed at SilencerShop.com. Making the world a quieter place. All right, back. I was uh, distracted here. I'm actually looking at a video online of Colin Noir uh, shooting a, uh, a SIG MPX. Uh, watch this video of that. That's just a hoot. Uh, wow, what a fun gun. Uh, had a chance to shoot one. It is fun. Can't wait to get one. Because, yes, at a certain point, even when you have a few guns, you look at it and go, yes, I have to have that. That's, well, that's what we do. That's why we keep telling you. I had this conversation with somebody this week. He said, well, I'm thinking about getting a gun safe. I said, I stop. Get the bigger one. Huh? What? Get get one that's two sizes bigger. I said, you know, take a look at the Liberty. And the guy next to me says, oh, yeah, I got the Liberty Fat Boy. I said, yep, there you go. So that's that's the deal. In other words, it's okay to buy more guns. In fact, it's good to buy more guns. They're not going to go down in value, although I don't call them investments. They hold their value, but you'll always be able to shoot them. You just you say, hey, I like that one. I haven't shot that one in a few years. I'll take it back out. Uh, that old revolver, I haven't shot revolvers in a while. Let's take that out. That would be fun, too. So there you go. 866-TALK-GUN is our number here. Get a, an email. Got, guy's got a bunch of questions. 
What is the definition of a 1911 gun? What makes it different from other autoloaders? How will I know one when I see one if I don't read the tag first? Hmm. Got to work on that one. Another question from same guy. I'm new to the AR-15 design and won't shoot my first gun without some instruction first. I don't understand the forward assist and some of the other things about it, so I would rather be safe than to learn by trial and error. I plan to rent an instructor for an hour or so and do it the right way. It goes on and on. All right, here's the deal. An hour ain't going to get it. Firearms instruction is a big deal. It takes a while. A day is a good start. A day is a good start, okay? Simple as that. Uh, let's go talk to Arthur on line four, Willow, Alaska. Hey, Arthur, you're on Gun Talk. Yeah, uh, anyhow, I did, the reason I was calling uh, was following up that other fellow's uh, talk about Bloomberg there. Uh, I, we moved up here from Nevada here about 15 years ago, and uh, I noticed in the American Rifleman there that the uh, Nevada has an initiative on their, uh, on their uh, ballot this year. It's called Question One, and it's one of Bloomberg's uh, – ambiguous uh, gun control things that they're trying to get uh, going. And uh, I was, uh, uh, it mentioned that uh, 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 ill-defined uh, uh, definition of transition, uh, trans- transfer means that if I go down and visit my son, uh, who's got his family down there in Nevada still, that uh, mm-hmm. if we want to go out and shoot and he hands me a gun uh, before he can do that, we've got to go get, uh, get me a background check. And then before I can hand it back to him, he has to go get a background check, you know. So uh, this is basically. Well, uh, let, I thought let, I let me jump in here, Arthur, because uh, let me let me explain. Hi, Arthur, hold on a second here. Let me explain this for those who are wondering what are we talking about. This is the so-called universal background check, also known as the comprehensive background check. For those who don't like the fact that right now, when you buy a gun from a dealer, the FBI checks it out. It has to give it's okay. That's fairly restrictive. That's actually fairly repressive. But what they say is, no, 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 no. If you sell a gun privately, which is perfectly legal now without having a background check, we want there to be a background check there. But, 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 but wait, we're not done with you yet. If you loan your gun to a buddy for the weekend to go pheasant hunting, we want the FBI to know about that too. And then when he get, brings it back to you, on Sunday afternoon, uh, after having hunted with it for the weekend, now you're going to have to do another FBI background check for him to hand the gun back to you. I'm not making this up. That's exactly how the law is working right now in other states, uh, Oregon being one of them, where you have the universal background check, so-called. The idea is they want to end private sale of guns. They want to make it much more difficult to give a gun to somebody, to loan a gun to somebody. In other words, look, let's not make no bones about it. They want to know who, everybody who has a gun. They want to know what you have. And they want to make it a felony. And it, here's the deal. It is a felony not to do this. So if you loan a gun to a buddy for the weekend, that's a felony. If he hands it back to you on Sunday afternoon and you don't do the background check, that's a felony. It's insane. And yet, going back to our interview with John Lott we just had, and yet, that's what Bloomberg has been able to purchase because he can go in. And and they've said, look, we can't get this done on a national basis, but we can go in and do advertising buys in states. And if we can get it on the ballot, we can con the public into buying into this. So when you see these numbers about 80% of the people or 90% of the people want the universal background check, the poll always starts off with, do you support background checks to buy guns? They never start off with, well, the current law is when you buy a gun from a licensed gun dealer, got to be licensed by the federal government, the FBI has to okay every single one of those purchases. So they start from people's lack of knowledge, thinking that there is no background check needed. And they say, well, sure, we think you ought to have a background check. That sounds reasonable. So that shows up in the poll, phony baloney polls, as 
Ninety percent of the people, or whatever the number is, want the universal background check. They don't is when you start to explain to them what the current law is and what this UBC actually means, where you can't loan a gun to somebody. You can't hand a gun, in some cases, to somebody. And you certainly can't give a gun to your son or your daughter for Christmas or for birthday or to your brother. You can't give a gun to anybody without having the FBI involved in it. That, that's why we're fighting this so hard. Nevada, it's on the ballot there. Maine, it's on the ballot there, and it's coming to your state. Just believe it. It's, it's coming there right now. Let's see. Mike had, in Moody, Texas, called us. He said Fox News is reporting that ATF is not destroying the records on background checks. Yeah, well, did we ever think they were going to? We caught them breaking the law before. They said, oh, we're just doing that to test the system integrity. That's what it is, system integrity. That's why we're breaking the law, because we're required to destroy these records within it's 24 or 48 hours. But we're keeping them for years. Huh. Huh. Did anybody really think, once they got it all on computers, it was ever going to go away? Do you think there's not a backup to the backup to the backup to the backup? How many days? Will, line two, Waco, Texas. Hey, Will, what you building? I'm building my very first AR-15. I'm building my first. I already own two of them. I am mm-hmm. already got the lower done, and I'm up on the upper. I am after a bolt, and I started looking on all these different coatings. They got nitride coatings, phosphate, you know, titanium coating, bluing, <laughs> you know, yep. 15 different, different coatings. It's ridiculous. Is yep. do I need to look at a certain coating? You know, this one is, hey, this is right in your middle of the road. You know, this is the, the whole bill is going to be about $3,000 what I'm at. And so okay, I here's my, here, here, look, I I'm, to- I'm, I'm almost out of time. Let me tell you what to do. Go to the website brownells.com or ar15builder.com. That'll get you there, ar15builder.com or go to the brownells, B-R-O-W-N-E-L-L-S.com. They have all the parts, they have all the explanation, they have the videos there to describe building your AR and the parts that you need and why each thing is important or maybe not important or what's in it for you. That's where I would go, and I think you'll find pretty much everything you need to know there. Building an AR is fun. Get the parts, put it together, go out and shoot it. Yeah! Gun Talk encourages you to support the local sporting goods store, gun stores, ATV dealers, and other local businesses in your area who advertise on this station and Gun Talk. Only together can we protect our rights. You're listening to Washington Times Opinion Page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. Well, this is a weird one. Looks like in uh, Waller County, Houston, Texas area. A Texas county sued a gun rights activist who has complained that county officials were unlawfully barring firearms from being brought into a public building. They are suing him because he has written a bunch of letters and he is protesting this and trying to get them to change their policy. And they're asking $100,000, basically telling them to shut up, or we'll use taxpayer dollars and try to ruin you? What's wrong with this picture? Wow. Somebody needs to drop a hammer, a safe, a car, a locomotive on the people who are doing that. Somebody needs to yank them out of office. Guy's exercising his First Amendment rights, and you're going to use government taxpayer, that is, dollars, to shut him down because you don't like what he's doing? Hmm, I can think of the, the word RICO comes to mind. I'm thinking a countersuit. Let's go for triple damages here. Yeah, we can, there's some stuff that can be done. As I often say, there's more than one justice system out there. People, be careful. Be careful what you wish for. 
John, Boston, line three. What's happening in Massachusetts, John? Well, I can tell you I'm surrounded by lunatic liberals up here. There's not too many of us conservatives. And uh, I want to thank you for mentioning on your show earlier today uh, the Attorney General Maura Healy's illegal gun grab. Um, unbelievable. We have been just, just, just unbelievable what she's by done. The, uh, liberals up here for years, and, and, and it kind of upsets me because uh, I'm an NRA member. I'm a member of uh, Gun Owners Action League of Massachusetts. And I can honestly tell you, and it and it it saddens me to say this, but the NRA hasn't really helped law-abiding, responsible gun owners in this state in in years. I mean, we have some of the most restrictive gun laws in the nation, and at the stroke of a pen, uh, basically made everybody who owns an AR-15 a felony in waiting. And uh, hey, wait, 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 back up, back. Me. Hey, John, whoa, hey, John, take a John, 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 take a breath. I want to stop you because I want to find out what you're talking about here. You're, the monologue doesn't get us anywhere. You said the NRA hasn't helped because with the stroke of a pen, they did. And I'm going, wait a minute. The NRA didn't do something with the stroke of a pen. You're, you're putting two things together. What are you talking about? Is John still there? Yeah, I'm still here, yeah. All right. So I, what I'm asking is, what what are you talking about? You said the NRA hasn't helped us here because with a stroke of a pen, this woman, you know, had this interpretation. What was the NRA supposed to do about something that they never saw coming? I'm, I'm well, trying to I'm figure out why them, you're putting those two together. They haven't been proactive in protecting uh, our gun rights up here. Um, if people try to get a hold of the NRA and call them, the only number you can get through is the subscription line. And, it, you know, it's just... They every time you get, they say refer, they refer us to goal, go to goal, and people at goal are getting frustrated with the NRA. And I think this would be a great stand for the NRA to use some of its uh, money and its power to, to, I don't know, get, get the gun distributors together, file a class action lawsuit against the attorney general, against the state. Uh, it's just, it's just sad to see. Uh, okay, the way I got a question is. for you. All right, you know we had Jim Wallace on last week, right, from Goal? Did you hear that interview? I did not. Okay, yeah, we, we've, we've talked a good bit about this. We had Jim on. You know Jim, right? Yep, yep. I was at the okay. rally uh, where he was uh, the week that right. the Attorney General enacted this uh, uh, legislation, like her interpretation so, of the law. Right, so Jim's been a friend for a long time. I had him on the show last week. We talked about this. Now, here's the question. And it's the tricky one, because, of course, the NRA doesn't do anything about legislation. It's the ILA that does all of this. But here's my question to you. When you say they're not doing anything, how do you know? Well, we have some of the most restrictive gun laws in the whole country next to New York. I understand that. I understand that. But my, my, my question to you is this. How do you know what the NRA is doing? How do you know they're not working on this behind the scenes that you don't know about? I don't because there's no way to get in touch with anybody. There's no uh, customer line to call up, to, uh, not not to vent or complain, but to, to ask, you know, mm-hmm. hey, how, what's going on? Are you guys going to do anything here to help out uh, the legal law-abiding gun owners uh, that we're being vilified up here? You know, and do you uh, have do you, you do you? Let, let, I'm trying to help you here, okay? Do you have the phone number of the NRA representative for your area? I do not. Okay, you should have that. With your passion, you know, there's an NRA representative for your area. There's an NRA representative who works with the legislature and works on this. You should have his or her phone number. You should have his or her email address. That is easily available. Easily available. I'm, I'm sure, and I hope they're doing something behind the scenes uh, legally uh, with Cole. Uh It's just it's frustrating because I don't see any results, end results of it. Right. I mean, they made an assault weapons ban in, I think it was 94, 98, and she's basically saying everything that's with purchased is a copycat, and it's a felon to own it, but we're not going to press charges right. against you. So a lot of people are thinking this is uh, going to turn into back to a gun confiscation when, when we go to renew our gun permits, our LTCs. Uh, I think you're right. Gonna, you know, say, hey, we won't charge you with the felony, but uh, it says here that you have uh, three AR-15s. That's three felonies, unless you 
turn the guns over to the state. So, uh, and like I said, if it, it and I, I applaud Gold's action. If, if you know, they organized a last minute rally, and it was at the state house, and it was huge. And the attorney general did this when uh, the Republican National Convention was in session. So a lot of the state legislatures were there and stuff. And uh, just a really, you know, backdoor sneaky thing for for uh, the attorney general to do in the state. And the Republican Republican governor of this state, Charlie Baker, has uh, sat silent and not come out against it. In fact, supposedly he supports it. That's why it's not uh, have there's no pushback from him. So. Uh, well, just, look, I hear your I frustration. I, 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 no, 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 no. I, I fear your fr- frustration. I can hear it all the way over here, and I understand it. You know, and you got to work through gold, and you got to, you know. But you know, it's that old deal of people say, "Well, what's the NRA doing?" I say, "Well, there is no NRA. There's just you. That's all there is. And you are the NRA." And and I get it. And and I know. Look, I understand that you're right. And, and in many cases. The NRA has not gotten involved in state issues when I felt like they should have and other people felt like they should have. But at the same time, if you don't have the phone number of the NRA representative for your area, then shame on you. And I'm not just talking to you. I'm I'm talking to everybody, John. If you don't have the phone number, the cell phone number of the NRA representative who works with the legislature in your state, shame on you. You can get that. I'll make every effort to try and find that. Okay, I mean, you can get that. Look, I appreciate it. I'm glad you brought it up. It is a huge, huge issue. I I, I'm, I don't know what's going to happen in Massachusetts. I just know that people are working on it, good people at Goal, and I know the people at NRA and people at NSSF, they're all working on this. This thing just came down. It just came out of nowhere with the Attorney General saying, oh, yeah, those guns that uh, were legal yesterday, no, not legal today. Nobody passed the law. Nobody voted for it. Didn't have a chance to speak on it. Huh. Really? You could do that? I don't think so. Now we're going to find out. 866-TALK-GUN. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out. Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the SIG Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose SIG Sauer. Visit SIGSauer.com today. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. If you carry a gun, you need training. Your concealed carry class was definitely not training. But time, money, and obligations keep you from spending days at a shooting school. The trusted folks at Gun Talk can help. Concealed Carry One, our DVD featuring the VADA group, covers what gun, what holster, how to carry, where to wear your gun, and much more. Visit ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Look. This really is life and death. Learn how to stay aware, how to get away, and how to fight if you must. At ShotGunTalk.com, you can get the two DVD set, including Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. No matter what gun you carry, this vital training info can save your life. Learn the draw, the stance, reloading, vital gear from Gun Talk. That's ShotGunTalk.com. ShotGunTalk.com. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org.
All right, we're back with you. I, I do feel John's pain. I really do. I mean, the folks in Massachusetts uh, and California both. It's horrible what's going on there. Horrible. It's fascist for the attorney general in Massachusetts to simply say, I am reinterpreting the statute and all those guns that we told you were legal for 15 years, now they're illegal. But, oh, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm not going to prosecute you for the felony that we said it was okay for you to commit. Well, I'm not going to do it right now. Now, when you go to re-register your gun, all bets are off. And, you know, I may not be in office then. And who knows what the next attorney general is going to do. Should string her up and run her out of the state. Should run her out of the state on a rail should vote her out of office, and anybody else that supports this. But we still have, I can't believe this, can't believe this. We still have hunters who say there's no issue. Oh, they're not going to do anything. We still have hunters that say, well, I don't know why anybody would want one of those rifles. Really? Not understanding that semi-auto means semi-auto. Pistol, rifle, shotgun. Rapid fire to a gun banner means a pump-action shotgun. Oh, you're just uh, overreacting. That's not true, really. I'll give you the phone number of some friends of mine in Australia and let you guys have a talk. Charlie's on line one. Bremerton, Washington. Charlie, thank you for calling. Hi, Tom. Uh, just wanted to, first of all, thank you very much for your action alert. I, uh, just the other day, we got uh, Dr. Lott's book from Amazon. So wanted to let you know cool. that those do make a difference. People open your emails, and they act on them. How do you uh, like the book? Uh, so far, I haven't gotten very far into it, but it's an easy read. Um, it's uh, Dr. Lott write, writes very clearly, and it, it's easy. Mm-hmm. There, there's not a lot of jargon in there, and it's... Uh, um, it, it's it's a fun read too. I mean, it's a scary read because of the topic, but it it just mm-hmm. it's easy and it's fun to read. It's like, wow, really? I didn't know that. But like I said, I haven't got exactly into it yet. So okay, uh, yeah. For those who are, let me just say, that for those who are tuning in, like the book is called "The War on Guns: Arming Yourself Against Gun Control Lies" by Dr. John Lott. It's available on Amazon. Okay, I'm sorry. Now go ahead. Oh no, that's uh, the. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to share uh, with you and your audience, uh, my wife went with me late last week to buy some dress clothes, of which I had none, and we're driving home, and my wife looked at me in the car, and she said, well, honey, maybe in a few years you'll consider open carry. And I looked at her, and, excuse uh-huh. me, what, what, what are you talking about? She said, well, your clothes are always so baggy because you always carry concealed. And I, I thought, uh, you know, if you were open carrying, you could wear clothes that fit better. <laughs> you know, I actually know what she's talking about because I like tucked in shirts. That's kind of the look I like. And I have gone to shirts that are not tucked in. I don't like the look, but I, I do that to carry up, to cover up the gun, to have a cover garment. Um, I know exactly what she's talking about. Now, obviously, one way to go is to a smaller gun that's in a pocket uh, that now you could wear regular pants and tuck in your shirt and have a small gun like in a back pocket or something like that. You know, carry a, a Ruger LCP type gun, something like that. Uh, I actually had somebody mention, and you know me, I'm, I'm always, and look, thanks for the call, Charlie. I'm always trying different stuff. I do this for you, of course. It's, it's not because I like to do this. Yeah, right. Uh, as I speak to you at the moment, I am, let's see, what am I carrying? Uh, I've got a sticky holster on. Somebody kept telling me, sticky holster, try it. I I don't know. It's a rubber sleeve thing. It's pretty darn comfortable. I've got a Glock 42 with a Crimson Trace laser grip on it. Um, not bad. It's very thin. Not, not perfect for everything. It's why we have to have different systems. We have different guns for the different ways that we dress. Sometimes I wear a bigger gun with a cover garment. Sometimes I wear a real small gun that slips into a back pocket in a recluse holster. Sometimes I wear an alien gear or a crossbreed holster with one of their belts. Just depends on what I'm wearing that day, where I'm going, what I'm doing. You, know, you don't have uh, just one fishing rod or one golf club, and women certainly don't have just one pair of shoes. <gasps> be careful when you use that one. We'll be right back.
Speaking of carrying different guns for different uses, <laughs> let's go to the phone. Tim, line four, Carson City. What happened, Tim? You changed your gun? Oh, I've not changed my gun at all. I got another one. But I, I, love, <laughs> uh, I, love, I love it. What, what, I, what I'm talking about, though, is I love my Glocks, but, you know, they're heavy to put on if I'm just running. Uh, I ran a bunch of errands this morning. And, but what mm-hmm. I found myself carrying when I put on my shorts, it's hot today in Nevada. I had my Brugger LCP, and uh, mm-hmm. it's a great. I, I have the custom model. It shoots great, oh, yeah. and I'm using the Hornaday um, Critical Defense uh, 90 grain FTX Foxtrot Tango X ray um, because right. the ballistics are great. But the big thing with this that I found is I'm using the Bianchi 152 leather holster for that. I've had a whole boatload of other holsters to try to carry that uh, as, a, as a pocket carry, and I've been mm-hmm. unsatisfied with them. This Bianchi, it fits in the holster great. You have complete trigger coverage. It's highly secure in the holster. It doesn't print, and, and it's a great piece. It's a leather, and personally, I found it works great for me. And it's just I find myself having an easy pistol to carry like this. I'm carrying more frequently versus you know, the the, mm-hmm. the way I should be carrying, I guess, you know. Well, it's a great point. You know, a three eighty that you have is a whole lot better than a bigger gun that's still back at the house. That's that's right. That that's terrific. That's well, it. you know, and that's been my experience too. I mean, I kind of have made peace with the uh, I generally am carrying a double stack nine. But sometimes, I mean, let's be honest, sometimes I switch to a Springfield XDS or a Shield or something like that, a single stack. And then I have a couple of LCPs, and there are times when I need to dress like a grown-up, you know, and tuck in my shirt and all of that where there's really no way to conceal. And that's when I go to an LCP and generally like a back pocket and a holster that looks like it's a wallet in your hip pocket, but you can still pull the gun out. I haven't, and it's just my build, different people have different builds, I haven't found a front pocket holster or system that works comfortably for me, but I think it's more a matter of the length of your torso and things like that. Don't you find that your body build actually dictates some of this too, Tim? Yep, absolutely. And, and of course, the type of uh, pants that you're wearing, the, the size of the pocket itself mm-hmm. uh, to allow that mm-hmm. thing to move around. That's why, again, that the, like I said, I have, I've had a bunch of these holsters and they're all sitting in the corner but this bianchi is the one that i have my weapon in it's the the 152 uh it's leather it's great you, you know you know what we should do tim all of us should all get together and bring our each of us bring a box of holsters and just put it down <laughs> and say oh, like it, it, you could go take two holsters out of anybody's box anything you want and anybody else could take two holsters and then we all end up with somebody else's holster that didn't work for them and maybe we could try that for a while what do you think it's a great idea. The holster swap. Yeah, exactly, because we've all got a box of them. That's right. <laughs> all right. That's well, look, right. I appreciate the call, sir, and a great report, great range report. Yeah, the LCP or uh, any small gun that you will carry is of more value than a big gun that you decided today, I'm just not going to carry it. That's also why we have to have more than one gun. Okay, I got the big one for when I can do that. I got the small one for when I can't. Um, you know, I'm not rationalizing really and truly. I'm not. This is actually the way it works. You have to have different tools for different situations. Yes, you could get an adjustable crescent wrench and take apart things, but a really good set of snap-on or craftsman tools is going to do a better job. Besides, there's a lot more pride of ownership. And, oh, yeah, did I mention it's fun to have more guns? So there you go. So, all right, make it uh, your promise you're going to carry all the time. You're going to get the tools you need, holster, belt, gun, everything else. Check your six, love your family, protect yourself and them, and we'll see you next week.